What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and as the title suggests, we are having a welding wire showdown. So let's get going. All right guys, this is what we've got. I've got wires that are sourced from all different kinds of common places that you guys would normally buy a welding wire and they range anywhere from $18.75 for a two pound spool all the way to almost 30 bucks for a two pound spool. So is there a difference between the two? I've purchased all of these wires with my own money. None of this video is sponsored by anyone and no one has given me anything. This wire here is made by Matheson. It's their own in-house store brand. This is the personal wire that I choose to use. So maybe there's other wires that I'll like better after this, but I don't know, but this is the wire that I personally choose to use. The way I've priced these out is by the pound. So if you see the next slash after the line item, that is by the pound. And I have them in order from cheapest to the next to most expensive, next, next, next to the most expensive. I've also included a 10 pound spool price down in the bottom left corner. So you can see 85 for that, 74, 79, almost 100, and it's not available in this brand, and this is from O'Reilly Auto Parts. The only one that is a little different than the rest, so this is a 10 pound spool, that's a two. The Lincoln Electric Inner Shield only comes in a one pound spool or a 10 pound spool. They don't make it in two. These are two, that's two. So the big question is guys, we're gonna be running all of it in our Flex Core 125. This welder was donated by a fan recently and if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I go over all the features and specs and how to set up this welder from Harbor Freight. He donated it, I thought that was great. So, but the one curious thing that I have is, is how are these wires gonna run in this machine and is there a difference between an 1875 versus 2999? All right guys, so that the wire we're gonna be starting out with is Matheson. That is the cheapest wire cost-wise on our list. And I will have actually say I am pleasantly surprised that this actually will take a 10 pound spool. So you can use the big 10 pound spools or you can use the two or the one pound. So that's great that this welder takes both. So now I'm just gonna start feeding it in and I'm not gonna go over how to set it up or set your tensions or anything. If you wanna know about that, again, I have that link up above. You guys can check that out. And I go out in detail on how to set this up, get your tensions set and whatnot, so. And again, this wire is sourced from Matheson and it's $9.38 a pound. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm told that this wire is manufactured in the same facility as the Lincoln Inner Shield. But I don't know, we'll see. If that's the case, supposedly these wires are the one and the same. So we will find out soon enough when it comes to running that Lincoln wire. Is there a difference between this and Lincoln wire? Now this type of wire has a bunch of different names. It can be called FCAW, it can be called flux coil wire, but more appropriately would be inner shield. Inner shield meaning that the wire itself is actually like a pipe, it's like a tube. And inside that hollow tube is flux, the compound that actually shields the weld from the atmosphere. With MIG welding, you're actually using a gas and that gas shields the weld from the atmosphere. The advantages of having a flux coal wire is that you can use it in windy conditions, so it is great to use outside where a coverage gas, you know, argon C25 gas, that would blow away in the wind. So inner shield flux coal wire is great to be used outside. It also works good inside when it's really hot and you have fans running. That's why I run a lot of flux coal wire because when it's hot, I turn on my fans. So let's get going. Now I am gonna start off with just a quick lesson on getting your flux coal wire through the liner, through the gun and what makes it the easiest and then we'll just speed through all the rest. Now, what I like to do is I like to unscrew the nozzle, unscrew the contact tip, get right rid of that and then take this whole lead and stretch it right out straight from your machine. You wanna to try to get this lead as straight as possible. Have your wire feed speed, not crazy fast, but not crazy slow. Put it somewhere right in the middle and then start feeding it and watch right here for a bird's nest. You wanna make sure that this doesn't get all wound up in here and have a, cause you have a feeding problem. That might be a little fast. Keep it nice and straight. Eventually it'll feed right out the other end. I'm looping it around guys, just so you can see in the, uh, in the shot as the wire comes out the end. I can actually feel it running through the liner. 
there it is right there. Now, if you want to know how I set my tension on this, go ahead and watch that other video. I show you how to do it. You can use a block of wood. I don't do it that way. I do it a different way. So go check out that video. And it doesn't have to be just with that welder. You can use it with any type of wire feed welders. And that's how I set them all up. So now you're just going to screw your contact tip back on. Give it a little bit of tightness with your MIG pliers. That way it makes a nice contact. Screw on your nozzle. Trim your wire flush. Then dip your entire assembly in some nozzle gel. And what that does is that will prevent the spatter from building up inside the, the nozzle and plugging everything up. Now after every wire that we test, I'm gonna feed a new wire through, I'll clean the contact tip, I'll clean the nozzle, and then I'll put jelly on it again. So that's all the same every time. Now with any welding process, guys, you wanna make sure that you're safe. So I've got my shop-built DIY ventilation system going. That's a $60 build. If you wanna know how I built that, I'll have a link up above. You guys can check it out. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get yourself a nice helmet. At a bare minimum, a nice pair of gloves, a respirator, especially with flux bore, because there's a lot of gases that you're gonna see that come off the flux bore. You don't wanna breathe that in. Wanna make sure that you got yourself like a cotton jacket or something to cover your sleeves so you're not getting welding burns. And here I have on a welding cap. Now to keep things very consistent, what I'm gonna be doing guys is I have my ground grounded to my table. I'm not gonna disturb it or move it. And I've got my workpiece clamped down to the table. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna run a bead. I'm gonna run a bead with each one along it, and we're gonna take a look at it and see how it looks, what I think of each one, if I had any problems, if we had any feeding problems with it, bead appearance, and so forth. So that's the setup, let's get going. This is all 30 thousandths wire that we're using. The first wire we're gonna be running is the Matheson. It's the least expensive of all the bunch. It's $9.38 a pound, and that is actually the preferred wire that I use every day for my projects. And I get this wire at my local welding supply. Matheson is all around the country, so you can get this same wire anywhere. The next wire in our lineup is gonna be Harbor Freight's Vulcan brand at $10 a pound. I'm actually having some issues with this wire starting out. Uh, the wire is like stubbing, it's just, it's like and I haven't changed any of the settings on the machine, so I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I'm not having great luck with this wire as of yet. And I've only done like a quarter inch bead. So I'm gonna keep going and see what happens. I double checked my tension on the drive rolls and on the wire feed reel. And uh, those are all good, so I don't know. Give it another try. Let me, uh... Let me lower the speed a little bit. We're going to chip all the slag off after and look at it but i had to slow down the wire feed speed from eight down to seven with this wire uh, i was running eight on this one it ran fine i kept the settings the same for this section of it and it just kept stubbing i lowered it to seven and did this and then it appeared to run okay we're going to chip all these uh flux core off after and examine the bead but i just kind of right now i'm just trying to see how they run so far this has run the smoothest this has actually run pretty good, which is the Harbor Freight Vulcan wire. 
after I slowed down the travel speed. The next wire we're gonna be running is Lincoln Electric Inner Shield, and it is the third inexpensive on the list at $12.97 a pound. You won't be able to see the label simply because it's only on one side and on the way that the drive rolls are feeding in, so you won't be able to see that. The fourth wire in this lineup is from Tractor Supply. It's Hobart wire at $27.99 for a two pound spool or $13.96 a pound. This is the fourth wire in our lineup. All right, the last wire in our lineup, guys, is from O'Reilly Auto Parts, and the wire is called Vapor. Now, this is the most expensive wire in the entire lineup at $15 a pound. Unlike all the other wires, it is not available in a 10-pound reel, and I called them. They don't make it in 30 thousandths or 35 thousandths in a 10-pound reel. It only comes in the 2-pound. Okay, this is running just like the Harbor Freight Vulcan wire. It's stubbing, you can hear it. Uh, let me bring it down to seven and see how that works. All right, it's still not running good, guys. Let me lower it down to about six and a half. Alright guys, so initially with the Matheson wire, you can see how the bead profile is different than all the others that I did. And that's because I was traveling a little bit faster with this than I was all the others. So it's not really a consistent test, so I chucked back up the Matheson wire. I'm going to run one more bead along this right here and count that as the first one just because I didn't do all the others at the same travel speed. I want this to be a fair and honest test, so in order for that to be, I've got to make the travel speeds all the same. So let's try this again. Oh, and I gotta be back up at eight for this wire. All right, now it's time to scrape everything down, clean it all up, and then I'll tell you my thoughts. All right, guys, the results are in, and I think it is crystal clear which one ran the best for me. Again, this M right here that I put, that's for Matheson. So that's Matheson wire. So I kind of have them in order as, as I ran them, and it's also in order of price. So Matheson, Harbor Freight Vulcan wire, the Lowe's Lincoln wire, the Tractor Supply Hobart wire, and the O'Reilly's Vapor wire. So by far, the wire right there that I found ran the best was not the one I've been running normally. So that happened to be this third one over. So we've got Matheson, Harbor Freight, Matheson, Lowe's. So the Lowe's inner shield Lincoln wire was the one that I found worked the best and that's the one I'm going to be running with from now on. And you can see the 10 pound reel of it 
actually is $79.98 versus Matheson's $85.11. So although by the pound it works out to be cheaper at Matheson versus $12.97 a pound at Lowe's, uh, this actually, this wire is cheaper on a 10 pound reel. So I'll be running this wire for me from now on the Lincoln 030 Inner Shield for Flux Core. Now, as far as you guys complaining about the uh, this welder not running wire well, well, I guess I could see why you'd have that complaint because I had that same problem using the Vulcan wire. So the Vulcan wire, if you remember right, it started stubbing at the very beginning. And then I had to change the setting from eight down to seven for the wire speed feed. And then it started getting a little bit better profile, but it still looks humped up. It doesn't look good. It just, it's not a good looking weld. Now that almost compared exactly to the same welder he, uh, wire here, which is, this is the most expensive wire of the bunch. And uh, it ran terrible. So in my opinion, this wire, I would, you couldn't pay me to use it. I, I just, it, I don't like it. It's, it's no good. It didn't run good. I couldn't get it to feed right. Uh, it kept stubbing. It just, it did not run good. So that answers your question right there. Will a wire at $15 a pound, does it run better than something that's a lot less money? And no, it does not. So not in my experience. So I would have to say that probably in order of how things ran the best, by far the Lincoln electric wire. And then I would probably say maybe second, was maybe the tractor supply wire. That was pretty close. That ran pretty good. And then the Matheson wire. But as far as uh, the two wires, I probably would not run, in, at least in this machine, uh, would be the Vapor and the Vulcan. They just, they didn't run good. You guys heard how they went. That's the Vulcan wire there. That's the Vapor wire there. So, yeah, I think that's pretty clear in my mind of where we stand in this whole thing. So my recommendation to you guys, if you have one of these Harbor Freight welders, go pick yourself up some good wire. You know, that's my experience with this. And granted, that could be subjective. Maybe you guys have done similar tests and you haven't had good luck like this. And if you haven't, let me know your experiences down below. But I know for me that I personally am going to be changing wire. And I've run the uh, that Inner Shield Lincoln wire before. And then I switched over to the Matheson. Uh, it didn't feel like much of a difference. But when you're using one right on top of the other simultaneously, like with not a whole lot of gap, like you're running one wire, then running the next, it's easy to compare versus if you run one one day and then two weeks later you run a different wire it's hard to like reset that in your mind but it's crystal clear to me today running these five different wires of which one leads the way as far as like weld quality and for me that was the Lincoln wire I hate to say it I'm not a like a, a Lincoln guy I'm kind of a Hobart Miller guy but oh well I go with the blue, but hey, the red one today. And again, this wasn't a sponsored video. This is, I paid for all these supplies with my own money. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering about any of the stuff that you see me using, I'll have links down in the description below. And if you're wondering about what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below also. New videos every Friday, guys, so if you're not subscribed, please do so. Hit the like button, comment, make sure you hit the bell notification so you get notified of all my weekly videos. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, see ya.